who works in partnership with clients, advising them how to use information technology in order to meet their business objectives. He is the chair of the Temple of Light Youth Ministry, and he and his beautiful wife, Deandra, recently blessed our center with our newest temple baby, little Liam Suko. I should say little. Uh, <clears throat> known for his calm disposition, our speaker reminds me of the father who one night overheard his son pray, Dear God, make me the kind of man my daddy is. Later that night, the father prayed, Dear God, make me the kind of man my son wants me to be. Please help me welcome the kind of man our children wants us to be, Mr. Leron Lauren Suko. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Happy Father's Day to everybody also. Um, I'd like to invite anyone up who would like to give a tribute to their father before we get into the talk this morning. Kevin? Good morning, everyone. I would like to take this opportunity to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. In particular, I would like to say happy Father's Day to my dad. I am grateful for my dad in my life because he looks after me every day, sending me to school and providing food for me on the table. I admire my dad as a hardworking person that looks after me and his beautiful wife who attends to me daily. Huh? Dads are fun to watch and to play with because they make their sons and daughters laugh every moment each day. So I say on this special day, I would like everyone to wish each father a happy Father's Day with a smile. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Hi, Fashani. Morning, everyone. All right, um, Grandma, can I say come up here? I'll be super nervous. But my dad isn't here, but I want to say Happy Father's Day because. <laughs> there have been a lot of people here from us too, like Uncle John at, at Aglai Mavoho and Uncle Lauren, and uh, although Auntie Carmen's a girl, like she too. <laughs> but, um, happy Father's Day to everybody, and <laughs> happy Father's Day, everyone. Even the mothers, Happy Father's Day, because you contribute a lot to everybody's life. I'm I'm going to share with you my. This is what I sent to my father on WhatsApp this morning. Hello, Daddy. Thanks for being who you are. Even though I've always loved you, as the years pile up, I've come to appreciate you even more as a person. You've always supported me in dividing my own expression of self. I cannot remember a single moment in which you either told or showed me any, any negative impression on any decision in my life. The first time I got drunk, you asked, are you OK? And there, perched over an open toilet bowl <laughs> in the dark 4 a.m. of a Sunday morning, I remember feeling a powerful sense of being loved 
and his confidence, which is your confidence, in my overcoming a situation that my teenage mind envisaged as the end of the world. I was drunk. <laughs> Moving forward a few years, years later to my mid-twenties, while teaching a dance class of preteens in full view of their parents, I had this sudden sense that I was being watched. I looked up to find you slightly hidden amongst the other parents. You'd just flown into the island and had made your way straight from the airport to the dance studio to just make sure I was all right. Daddy, I thank you for always demonstrating a non-judgmental based fatherly love that has remained unchanged, unfazed, and constant, especially as it was then in flagrant contradiction to our society, society's condemnation of my honesty regarding my more primal lifestyle revelations. In retrospect, I wonder if my ability to easily appreciate God's unconditional love was based on your example of unconditional love. Thanks for being the father I wanted. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. I love you. Good morning, everyone. I'm impelled to speak. This, um, to ignore my first impulse and to speak about my father because I believe that now that he was the one that gave me my first steps towards this teaching without even knowing that the teaching existed. Neither I, I didn't know and neither did he, I'm sure. But my father was so loving, adoring towards me, so stable so larger than life in my eyes that when I was presented with the notion of a God that was vengeful, unforgiving, though loving, because my father was unconditionally loving, I took a decision at a very early age that if that was what God was like, he was less than my father and therefore why should I believe in a God like that? I did not know at that time that there was another way of looking at God until I found this teaching. And I have to say that each day I am so grateful that all the 19 years that I was exposed to such fathering that it prepared me to accept the notion of a God that was unconditional love. And therefore, today, with an open heart, I celebrate a father who would have had his imperfections, which I discovered afterwards, because I discovered a little sister I did not know. <laughs> but to me, he was the father that I would like to think of as love made manifest. So. Daddy, Sydney, Augustus Lamy, love you wherever you are now. <laughs> morning. <laughs> morning, everybody. It's so funny because almost everything that Reverend Sonia said, I can relate to. So I'm wondering if you have a brother that you never know about. <laughs> But um, every year, this day is a very touching day for me. Um, I lost my father a couple years ago. Well, not lost. He has moved on. And um, I, I celebrate him daily. I celebrate him in how I work, um, in my singing. In, I try to do it in every aspect of my life, and I know he's proud, and I know that I have made him proud. And I know that he was a father, and I love, I love him dearly for everything that he has done for me and has taught me. He has taught me how to be a man. And my only wish to honor that is just to do the same for that time in my life when I too 
will become a father. Daddy, I love you. Thank you for teaching me everything that you could. And thank you for setting me on this path. Liam can't speak, but I imagine that if he were to write his father a little letter, it would probably sound a little bit, <laughs> it would probably sound a little bit like this. Dear Papa, when I was with God and I saw you, I said to the Lord, there's my Papa, gotta go. Your voice was the first to calm me down when I arrived. I decided then that you were going to be my bestest friend. I love to roll over and get stuck under your armpit, then cry out loud like you did something wrong. I love to kick your tummy and blow spit on your leg. I love when you change my stinky diaper because you make funny faces. When I look in the mirror, the mirror I always laugh because I feel like I'm looking right at you. I couldn't have chosen a better daddy. You're doing a great job. Your son, Liam. <laughs> Morning, church. In everything, you have to make things. Nice. I, was, I grew up with my father and mother, and he was always there for me until I reached probably about 12. I started to look mature, and then he left, I guess because of society then. Anyway, a good thing. Anyway, I have grown up without him after a while, and I started having kids. Yeah, and then I become a single parent. And I remember when I came to... Um, Temple, when I started to come to Temple, as a single parent, I was growing my daughters, and I read in the um, Science of Mind, women were taken from men, so that means we also have the nature of a man as a woman because we're taken from a man, right? Understanding that? A man is in us because we are taken from a man. So that's how I started now to be manly when it come on to the boys coming to my home talking to my daughters. I always ask my daughters when they have a boyfriend to let me talk to them. So I'll sit down with them and say, look, this is how the father talk now, you know. I will talk and talk as a father. And you say, if you true deal with my daughter in any way, I will come home like a dog and all them things. And the strong ones will come back, and the rest of them will just walk around. They just don't come back. So today, I just celebrate me too as a father, mother, father. I celebrate all the fathers here today, too, too. And what I'm seeing today in society is the lack of fathers. And it's not even the lack of fathers, it's the lack of appreciating men. I see it a lot in the community. So what I do, I embrace the boys and the men mainly. Then call me mama or whatever. But I embrace them and I allow them every day of my life to make them feel appreciated every day, whether by saying a good word or by doing a good gesture to them. And for the ladies too, please, I'm going to ask you for us, support the cause and appreciate the men them that you have, the fathers, every day of your life. Tell them how good and how worthy they are. Because they need to hear that, seriously. Because we're bleeding because of that, the lack of the love amongst men. And fathers, we love you know. Men, we love you know. And blessings. Okay. Um, okay, I think that's it for tributes this morning. Thank you, everybody. They were really well done. Um, morning again, Temple family. <laughs> and um, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to those listening on the World Wide Web. Um, I guess it can be said enough, uh, Happy Father's Day again to everybody here. 
who is our father and those who are performing the roles of our father. This, this morning I've been bestowed the honor of sharing with you um, some lessons I've learned being a father. Um, what I hope to do is I'll share some experiences with you and then see if they can help, you know, give you some gems to, to go on by. Um, for me, as a first time father, it's a feeling that you know, I cannot describe. Um, I've searched for words, but I haven't found it yet. Um, but I'll use elated for no happy, grateful. I mean, it's just a whole sentence. Um, with just six months, or a little over six months under my belt, um, I don't know how much advice I will impart, but hopefully it's valuable nonetheless. Um, so far, the reviews have been good from the doctors, friends, other fathers, so I'll hold myself to you know, be at some sort of point of reference to give comment. Forgive me, I'm just a bit overwhelmed. Um, being a successful father, I cannot go without being said that um, I couldn't be called a good dad without having an extraordinary mommy to help me along the way. Because we may act like we know it all, but I guess we don't. <laughs> um, I want to start this encouragement the way that I start most days with Liam. I'm usually the first one up in the house, so what I do is I go by him and just wait for him to open his eyes, and then I give him a smile and wish him a good morning and a little hug. So if we all could, you know, share in that um, sorry, ritual that I have with Liam, if you could just go to your neighbor, greet him with a smile and say, good morning. I don't see anybody moving. Wow. Does everybody, anybody need a shot of coffee? Everybody feel now. Yeah. After I see more smiles than before when I started. <laughs> but um, I guess nobody told me good morning and stuff because I'm up here. But that's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get over it. Where's somebody, right, Michael? <laughs> All right. Um, what I've learned with doing this with Liam is that. Uh, he has picked it up as a habit, and what he has done, every time he sees somebody, the first thing he does, he actually does smile and greet them warmly, yes. right? Um, that being the first reaction that he gives people, um, I think it's important because it sets the tone for his interaction with them. What it does, it shows them that they are special, everybody is special in their own right. And initially, he appreciates them for who they are and what they are. Um, it's said that sm uh, smiling is rated as a gesture with the most emotional content, which is true, right? Because after the hug and the good morning, I could see the fa everybody's face change. Everybody's face was lit. Um, I'll give you a scenario of this in action. We've been in stores, and you know, they always have these angry clerks or reps. And you know, nobody wants to get that person. We're in queue and we're all hoping, let's, please, let's not get this person. But it so has it, that's the person that we get. But everything is in a divine order. It's happened in more than one occasion when we have stepped up with Liam. He has smiled, he has reached out to them, he has, you know, kind of playing with them and thing, and it changes their whole personality and their own persona. I remember one lady that was really, really upset, was really short with customers, 
And uh, when Liam smiled at her, she said, was that for me? You really made my day, little boy. Mommy, daddy, you gonna leave him with me for the rest of the day? He has risen my spirit, right? This has happened several times, different locations, different organizations. So it must be a pattern, it must be worth something. After leaving these reps, they are typically in a shadow of themselves, not the person that was there dealing with them before. And the benefit of that is that the other persons that, other customers that they deal with after also benefit from that interaction. Um, in our counseling with Reverend John and uh, the godparents before the christening, one of the questions that Reverend John asked was, what would you like to see for Liam? One of my responses was, was that I wanted that anybody who interacted with him, when they left him, they would feel better with themselves and his presence would have a lasting effect on them. So, um, I don't remember that, Reverend John. So that is the fruition of that wish for me, having for him. Um, so this is a reminder to us that we need to be very vigilant about what we put out in the universe because it's always listening and it's always ready to act upon our thoughts. Um, I would encourage everybody to start each day in a tone that puts them in the right frame of mind, knowing that it would ignite a light in them and then that light pass on to other people and then one to the other to the other. And then the whole island and extension of the world will be lit. Um, I heard it this morning and I hear it again all the time that Emma and I look very similar. <laughs> well, one lady even went as far as saying that we were twins, but <laughs> the, 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 the doctor said that when she delivered Liam, it was like she was looking at daddy. She, has never, she had never seen that before. Um, I've walked into stores minutes after the family has gone in and people at the door have said, sir, your son is that way. And these are people that don't know me and we don't have any relation. All true stories. Um, but, you know, looking at Liam, I don't know, I don't really see much of a facial resemblance. I actually see a lot of his mother in him. Maybe one or two, uh, more of his mother I, I see in him. But, you know, you hear the comments, he's handsome, he's cute, he's adorable, he's going to give his, the ladies trouble. So you have to actually start to put things in perspective and say, you know, so many people can't be wrong. I guess he does truly look like me. As we take qualities from our parents, facial features, um, voice, eye color, and stuff like that, we have to also remember that we take attributes from our true source, which is God. We need to remember that we're perfect in every way and we're equipped with everything we need. All of us have treasures in us. We're all very special and it's for us to find a way to dig deep and reach our gifts. Um, our, our gifts are important to share with the world because that is our, our voice. Today on display, we can see people's gifts. We hear Valerie with the music. There is uh, Sharon with the flowers, the garden, and your voices as well in the song before. Um, a lot of times we hear that we cannot do, a lot of times we hear what we cannot do. Sometimes we're the ones guilty of telling us, telling ourselves what we can't do. What I'm here to tell you is that you're strong enough, you're smart enough, and you're talented enough. You have the perseverance enough to do anything you want. You're equipped and empowered by God to get what you want. And nothing can stop you from doing that. As a new father, every day continues to be a learning experience. The first lesson I learned, and learned quickly, is that there's no room for procrastination. When you hear that cry, you got to get moving. Fortunately, Liam is not a big crier. 
So when he does cry, you know something is really up. Um, so I'll share a story with you. No, um, I wasn't home, and Liam started to cry. So Deandra checked him out and found out it was a mosquito bite. So I was um, at the mechanic sorting out the car. I got a spirited call from Mission Control. Lauren, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do that. I got an itinerary of tasks that I had to do with details, deadlines, and deadlines for completion. And within minutes of the incident, a site evaluation was done, a mosquito eradication plan constructed, <laughs> and the wheels were in motion to prevent any future bites. <laughs> Some of the tasks I didn't agree with, um, and I had an opinion on it, but you know when the boss calls, you have to respond, but, uh, yeah, but it's a different talk. <laughs> so needless to say, in summary, that afternoon the whole yard was sprayed, all the meshes on the windows were replaced, the door jams were, 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 were treated, the holes for all the sinks were covered. That's, that's just the stuff off the top of my head, but I remember working very hard that afternoon. But the end result was what we expected. No mosquitoes and a peaceful night's sleep. Me for more than one other reason. <laughs> Procrastination is one of our biggest foes. It's easy to find excuses not to do something. How many times, we have, how many times have we ever told ourselves that one day I'm going to do this, one day I'm going to do that. I'm sure everybody has experienced that. And I wanted to let you know, it happens to me too, that sometimes that one day never comes. We all have good intentions, but sometimes we neglect to get going. How many of us have meant to start exercising, um, start eating healthy? Let me invite. Somebody else, start doing what? Something, somebody over this side. There's a prize. <laughs> they don't get a prize. I'll give you one. Start attending a class at Temple. Um, start visiting a new place, taking a vacation, reading a book. I mean, I could go on and on and on about things that we need to start doing. And we just need to get, um, get, get going. The only thing that procrastination really does for us, is it really hurts us, it puts us back. And procrastination would, can, will prevent us from not finding our gifts that were mentioned earlier. Um, so I'd urge you to take action now. Even if this task seems too big, you can break it into smaller pieces until everything is done. Um, you have time, it's never too late to, to start. And the important thing is starting. Most people do complete when they start. An example of mine is one of my friends who is a new father as well. He used to smoke a lot. So what he did was, in, whenever he bought cigarettes, he would take one out of the box. And the next time he bought, he would take two, then three, then eventually he would continue until there were no more cigarettes left. So he has kicked the habit now in a matter of months, and that was his method of doing it. And that's no procrastination. Since Liam was born, there have been many, many, many stages. As a baby baby, he used to love having me around. We would walk, we would talk, he'd fall asleep in my arms. You know, life was good. A father couldn't ask for anything more. But then all of that stopped. I thought he was falling out of, out of love for me. Yes, I did question what was going on. I mean, I knew it was still there, but you know, just something changing overnight, as it does happen in life, it really calls for pause and question. And there was also another stage where he didn't want to leave mommy's arms. He only wanted to help for mommy. If I held him, he would, he would cry, which was unlike him. He just wanted to go back. And I think the worst one of it all was his love affair with the fan at the office. The fan at the office demanded all his attention. Whenever we walked, stepped into the office, his eyes would be glued to the ceiling. He'd look at the fan, he wouldn't take his eyes off of it. The smiles and the adoration he gave the fan was something that I used to have. <laughs> right? Um, it was so bad that we said, you know what, maybe we need to camp out at the office. But I found myself getting jealous of a fan, basically. It was serious. 
Um, okay, how did I deal with this one? Um, it was really, you know, these events really bothered me and I thought about it a lot and I tried a lot of things, but what I did was I just let go, right? So by, let go, by letting go, I released it and I said, God, I trust you. I trust your timing. I don't know, all will be well. Um, that being said, all those issues have been rectified. Today, Liam is my best friend again. And I'm the first, I've, I'm the first person he actually reaches for to be picked up. Um, he waits for me to come home from work at bedtime. He doesn't want to sleep unless I'm in a room. So, you know, life is good again. So my advice to you from, you know, this experience is that, you know, when you hold on to circumstances, it starts eating you up inside, especially if you worry about the results of what you want. And you don't have control over these things. You can say prayers, you can believe, and you know, still you won't get necessarily get the results. You, get you will get frustrated like those where you don't. That's what happened to me. But when you think you've done everything you, get, you can, there's always one thing that you can do, and that is let go. At that point, I did understand the expression, let go and let God. You're all familiar with that? It's, it's real. When you let go, God goes to work in amazing ways. Let God work on it for you with his timetable and it will be done. Do not be frustrated if it doesn't happen when you want. God will let it happen. Let me slow down. Do not be frustrated if it does not happen when you want. God will let it happen at the right time, just in time. Sometimes not having what you want is God leading you to another path opening another door for you, which has more opportunity, or it's the best resolution to whatever the circumstance may be. All right. Now that we're best friends, as any best friend would do, they want to ensure that your bestie is good at all times. It's only natural to be concerned when your best friend gets sick. Uh, I said, look on some people's face. It's not Liam that got sick, it was just me, so. <laughs> it was Liam. Yeah, boy, the love. <laughs> okay. I had a lingering cough after the flu. Um, Liam not seeing that before. And um, you could say his um, mood and facial expression changed. And then what he started to do was cough. So we thought Liam was getting sick. You know, we checked his temperature, checked everything all around. He actually wasn't getting sick. What he was doing, he was coughing because I was coughing. So he was actually trying to, I guess, come into or console me in some way. Cause he'd cough and he'd come beside me and put his hand on my side and stuff like that. And he, he would normally, we're fortunate enough for, for, to have him sleeping through the night, but those nights he would you know, normally stay up and think, I guess it's a coughing, whatever that kept him up. But he went to the extent of faking a cough to make sure that, you know, is that he's good. There are quite a few sto um, lessons in that story for me, but I'm going to just focus on love, on love and compassion for others. You know, just as a baby, Liam could tell something was wrong with me, and he did everything which was in his power to make me feel better. Um, we all have the chances in us to, do, to show love to people and to help others when we can. Do we always take those chances? Um, that's just food for thought. Are we procrastinating on them? And when Liam is older, you know, what, would, what would he do when he gets these chances? Um, the last lesson I'm going to share is the lesson that I've learned of gratitude. 
we the Father, we're, we're, we're grateful to God and everyone that prayed with us during the time of the pregnancy. Because at that time, you know, Chick V was a threat. Um, we avoided that. We didn't get that any at all, despite coming in contact with several people that have it and the business place being in Portmore, we're able to not get it. Um, the delivery was a C-section and then there were other operations and procedures that had to be happen in that time as well. Um, at the end of the day, there